Hello. Hello. Welcome. 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 Good to see you. Hello. Good to see you too. Come on in. We'll just, um... Hi, Nikki. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hi, Hi Nikki. Nice to meet you. Two of my communities colliding. It's lovely. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Nikki's in my um, like-hearted leaders community. Oh, okay. Um, Fabulous. Yes, yes, yes. So we've got Germany, the UK. Um, is Matt in? I think I saw. Anyway, I think Ireland was coming in. I'll just wait a couple of minutes uh, to let people join. And in the meantime, just make sure you've got, uh, I just ask that you get your cup of tea, um, lock the dog away, <laughs> or just turn off notifications. My dog is happily sound asleep on the couch, thank goodness. When I ran this event in the middle of the day last week, um, I had to uh, have him locked away in a, in a room. Um, and he was he was taken for a, a big, long run beforehand to, te to wear him out. Um, as I don't have a door on my office. So unfortunately, but, um, it's not soundproof. Um, <laughs> but here we are. It's it's. Um, I'm in Australia. It is 7.02 p.m. So we'll just give it another minute and see who else is going to join us this evening before we kick off. Before we kick off. It's been a, it's been a nice day here. It's funny how when, you know, we connect, you guys are starting your day, I'm finishing my day. And uh, I have very fun and enjoyable day so well hopefully ours will it's raining here and disgusting oh really yeah same here same ah oh, i'm sorry to hear that <laughs> it's your fault yes obviously <laughs> yes <laughs> um and, and but, Remini, is your fault that it's raining in germany so we got your clouds. <laughs> How do they make your clouds? <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to start anyway. And uh, what I might do actually is, Rem, I'll just make you co-host. Okay, I'll let people in. If they come on in so we can we can get started. All right, so welcome. So nice to have you here. How to supercharge your marketing with authenticity. The buzzword. Some people don't like the word, but hopefully I can dis persuade you from thinking that. Um, for those, uh, we've got obviously one or two that may not know who I am. Uh, founder of Six Star Business. So there's the business Six Star Business podcast and we have the community of which a couple of people here are members of. And I've the founder of a business called Journey Point. And I also am a lover of nature, people living life authentically. Yes, that word again. And I'm really looking forward to this because I'm going to go a little bit more into why I'm doing what I'm doing and what's brought me to this place here. But first, there's a little bit of housekeeping, aka the boring stuff. So I just ask that you turn off distractions your mobiles, um, notifications on the computer. You can certainly come off mute during uh, at the point where there needs to be questions or anything. I, I encourage people to use the chat to put comments in and ask questions at the end. I'll also make slides available. So that, uh, yeah, if you don't want to write things down, you don't have to. I see this on the right. I've got a legend here of write these down and that's where I've got some key points that might be well I believe they're quite you know pivotal points depending on wh where you're at you might decide to write them down or you can always ask for the slides at the end 
I always like to write things down. It helps me to solidify something in my mind. So what are we going to go through? Well, the session is going to roll for the next sort of 56 minutes or so. I'm going to give you a bit of history about me and what's brought me to where we are today. What I believe the problem is with marketing today, uh, I'm going to focus on what the main need is for, for business owners, uh, what most people are doing wrong, uh, what they can do right. I'll show you two key strategies that I'm using in the business to help my clients and what's getting them results. I'll give you a case study. We'll then go into some Q&A and we'll wrap up. So I'm going to give you a bit of history. So what brought me to here? I started off in the corporate world like a lot of us did. And I was lucky or blessed to fall into a role at Australia Post. Uh, about the time when I was pregnant with my daughter, who's now 23. And I did a number of projects there. And one of them, which was the key one I did towards the end, was helping to create employee experience. But just an one aspect of the employee experience. I did other projects uh, at, the, at a level that impacted all of their employees. And Australia Post has about 30 to 35,000 employees in Australia. And it was quite pivotal and I loved it. I dealt with external providers, designers, creatives, and it was, it was really, really pivotal. And I had no idea at that point that my working life was going to be based on, you know, that role, that experience. It, it sort of set the frame for the future. The thing is, I, I loved it. It was also attuned to my natural passions and which is people and understanding how they tick and creating ways for them to feel better, feel aligned, feel purposeful. And of course, being Australia Post, it's a government company, right? Effectively, it's a government organisation. And there's a lot of bureaucracy and people that stay there their whole careers. So I got to see the whole spectrum of employee life and working life. And I was there seven years and it was it was a beautiful you know entry into really helping to shape people's experiences in a in a company. I went from there to and I worked at NAB. And there's a link between all the everything that I've done. And I was at NAB, which is one of Australia's big four banks. They have worldwide about 50,000 employees because they own a number of overseas banks. And in Australia, they had just, just shy of 30,000 employees. And I had a role there as, as the onboarding manager and it came about because I, I was approached and they said, Aveline, we have a problem. 25% of our new employees leave within 18 months. And it was costing them an un, undefined amount of money. They believed it was in the hundreds of millions of dollars a year. So I went on a journey for three years to not only, first of all, quantify that, but then to manage a program of projects across a number of different departments to completely change the experience for the employees. And I finished that successfully. The CEO said, Aveline, you've changed the game at NAB. And I no longer felt that I needed to continue my 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 work in the corporate world, it kind of burnt me out. Like most of us who've been in corporate, we, we have a journey and then it comes to an end. And I wanted to continue investing in businesses and impact more people. So I did leave. But there's connections between all of these. And whilst this was about the employee experience and the employee journey and investing in what employees got there at that company, it was very similar to marketing because just as we need to engage a customer, I was engaging their employees. So when I left, I thought, great, I'll, I'll do this. And it was at a pivotal time, 2008. Now, rewind, 2006 is when Facebook and Twitter were born. And so by 2008, there was this early 
onset of a couple of marketing automation and technology companies that had, that had been born. And so when I started working for myself, I fell into the technology. And previously at both companies in NAB and Australia Post, I was using technology platforms, building an intranet and delivering things via technology. So it was always a big part of the journey. So I fell into marketing automation and I then, you know, went on to build a digital agency, had staff and a business partner and, and, and we ran that successfully up until COVID hit. And then we dismantled it and I re completely redefined what I was doing. But all along, it was about the journey. It was about connections. What I found when I was working in the digital agency, effectively I was, I was in marketing. So I've been around for a, a long enough to know all the gurus, all the different tools available. And you know, there's this been ex an explosion of technology since about 2010. You can get an app for anything. You know, there's so many tools out there now. And we've become very used to technology. And in the business, what I found was people would come to me or to us and say, we just want to funnel. We just want to get leads. Just set this up, you know, this technology piece, get us new leads that'll, and, and with the expectation that they then just get more sales. That's all they wanted. And I'd be like, yeah, but what about, the customer journey, the customer, you know, we've got to think about who they are. No, 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 we don't care about that. We just want the leads, just build this. They thought that if they built it, they could then leave a set and forget, build it and they will come. And it became very dispiriting, like for me, because they were putting, they thought the technology would solve everything. Early on, that process worked because it was brand new, like get a lead magnet, stick it on a website, someone opts in, you've got their email address, you can email them to death and then, you know, hopefully they'll buy from you. And early on that worked for a lot of people, but markets changed, people got used to it. It became harder and harder to get people's email addresses. So strategies had to change. And I've been, I guess, in, in the space of having to evolve to the customer expectations the whole way from 2008 up until present day. But what, it, what is it really all about? It's about connection with people. It doesn't matter whether it's, you know, what I was doing in the corporate world, but it was about connecting with the right people and ha having them believe in the business. And the connection is what it's all about. And I loved it. I loved it. It's, it's it, because this was the human element. And when I evolved my business at the start of COVID, I completely turned it around to focus first on the connection with the customer and then worry about technology second or even last. When we bring a new customer to our world, it's important for that, you know, you've got a goal, they've got a goal, but what are we actually doing in business? What is, what is it that we're doing it for? I believe that if we're not doing it for a reason to have meaning, then you've got to re-look re at what you're doing. But we all can tap into the reason, our reason for being in business. And it's always more than money. It's more than the numbers. And for me, it's all about the joy. When you have meaning in the business, then naturally you'll feel joy. To me, that is the goal, the goal of marketing and bringing in the right customer. You, when you bring in the right customer, you're serving the right customer. They feel good. You feel great. And when you tap into what brings you meaning, then that's when magic happens. And I'm going to go deeper into that now. Recently, well, actually, over the last eight months, we've run a number of events uh, in the Six Star business. And one of the polls we ran was this one. The question we asked was, what would you fix first in your business in order to have a Six Star business? And there's the numbers. The biggest one, marginally, next to growing your network of collaborative partners was fixing marketing and positioning. 
and every event it was pretty much similar to that number. 31% said that would be what they would fix first. And that told me that most people haven't actually figured this out yet. And it's no surprise because of the environment we live in. And, and when I say the environment, I mean the marketing environment. You know, not many people um, talk about how to be authentic in marketing. They talk about a tactic or the latest buzz tool, buzzwords, and you know, the rest, you know, of how to get more leads and sales. Because this has been the dominant drive. The dominant drive all the way along since I went into business in 2008 was this. And everything was driven around the, the, the notion that to be successful, you just need more leads and more sales and everything that delivers those two things. And when customers came to us in a digital agency, that's what they really were after because that's what they thought they wanted or needed. And they were chasing numbers and their, their own vision of success, which was monetary, but they hadn't tapped into what success was actually for them. So a different lens. What I believe that most people need is to be understood in their communications, to feel like they're connecting with the right prospects, to see that they're on the right path so that they've got forward momentum, um, to understand themselves and their value in a deeper and more meaningful way. And a big one that many people don't admit, and that is to overcome their limitations. And that is they need to heal. So what's missing? I believe from what I've seen over the last, what is it, 15 years, is a lack of the uniqueness, people's authentic uniqueness, as in you. So when a business owner comes to the market, they are lacking the ability to actually be themselves. And that is so critical. Why? Because when you attract someone to your business, ultimately they want to know who you are. You're selling yourself as well as the product. And the problem we have currently is that there's a big gap between genuine and fake. You can say whatever you like in your marketing and wow, it might attract a whole bunch of leads. Wow, this, this campaign has just got me a hundred new leads. <laughs> you might not have used the right, you know, genuine language. You might have copied off of the playbook from one of the gurus, you know, off the shelf and it's not genuine, right? I can tell you every time I see someone go through a campaign where they don't use, they haven't aligned themselves with their business, they haven't used the right language, they haven't been authentic in the way they've presented themselves, those leads that became customers, not only were we bad customers, they were, they cost a lot more, they were more, um, I guess, they, they were created more friction um, and they ended up leaving quickly. You know, there's a high turnover of these people. Why? Because they weren't aligned. So it's not about the number, I don't think. And, and I'm here to hopefully drive the point to you that it's not about the number of leads, but it's about the ones that align with who you are genuinely. The, the definition is of authentic is to be worthy of belief and trust. How can you be worthy of belief and trust if you're using someone else's language? If you're following a script from a from the playbook of you know an info marketer, I don't believe you can. I've never seen it work. So how do you be? Well, I, I say just be you. And and I think this is something that so many people struggle with because I don't know how they haven't been taught. In the last few years, I've seen more people step out and become brave or braver to be themselves. And it takes a bit, it takes healing, it takes courage to be themselves. And then it's like, but how do I do that? How do I do that in my marketing? 
Well, these are what I believe are the current problems that people have around that. So this is this all affects our ability to be authentic and, and therefore make our marketing work, right? The first one, people compete with each other, uh, copy others for ideas, content and language. This is a big one. People focus only on their products when they go to sell. Uh, the language used is generic, sleazy, and not authentic. Marketing agencies, and I can put my hand up here, you know, guilty, create cookie cutter empires to grow profits instead of focusing on the unique value of that business, that business owner. There's a lack of connection with customer needs. People don't know who they really are. Yeah, I might be hitting some spots here in, in within people. And then people don't know who their customer really is, right? There's assumptions that are made or they just haven't even thought about it. And then people operate out of, from a sense of fear and out of out, out of wounds. I just wanna highlight a couple that I believe are the, the biggest ones here. This one, as in I think this is done so much, it's been done over and over again throughout um, my small business career and working in marketing. People don't know who they really are. I think this is one of the biggest issues is they haven't done the work. They haven't spent the time to uncover who they really are and therefore what makes them deliver their service in their way. They don't really know who their customer is because they've never really found out. And this one, they copy others. What's the competition doing? What's, you know, Joe Blow doing that, that looks like me down the road? So getting back to the question that I asked before, what's more important? Is it the quantity of leads or is the quality? I think the more that we can get our heads around this and, and I think focus on quality, then the number doesn't matter. Because to me, it's always about quality, obviously. And I'm sure you're all sitting there going, well, of course, yes, but have you focused on the quantity or the quality of leads in the last 12 months with your marketing? That's a question for you to answer yourself. This is what most people do. This is what I see most people do, okay? Spray and pray approaches. You know, spray everywhere, all over social media, all over like different campaigns and they just pray, okay? Um, disconnected automation. They set automation up, they don't go back and fix it. It's disconnected, it's not connected to the customer, the journey or anything. It's just a, you know, a piece sitting there. They focus on just their LinkedIn profile or group posting. Uh, they'll do occasional live videos occasionally. Uh, they're doing the networking rounds to try and get more leads. Uh, they're spending a lot of time on outreach. Most people go it alone. And they waste money on different marketing gurus or, or businesses, services or tactics. And I see them copying others' approaches and following a trendy guru. Now, do you recognize any of these? Have you done it yourself? I bet you're all saying yes, probably most of them. And I'm not saying they're all bad. But this is what I know is working at the moment. Aligning your offer to your avatar, aligning campaigns connected to your avatar, joint venture events focused on your avatar, Targeted offers, oh, sorry, targeted offers to your avatar. Are you noticing that there's a pattern here? Okay. Um, Experience-based events to your avatar. Yeah. Roundtables, lives, and virtual events to your avatar. Okay. Referral partners, targeted channel strategies, consistency with your efforts and the message that you use. And the bottom one, which I've got in a different colour because it is so darn important, is having a structure and a framework that you follow religiously. This is what works.
All right. Now I said at the start, I was going to give you a couple of things that we're using in our business for our, our customers that is working. And this is the framework. So this pink one at the very bottom, all right, this is ours. So I'm being very transparent. This is our framework and we do it in this order. So we start with brand. Then we look at purpose. We look at unique style. We create the avatar. We focus on the genius. We create message to market. We, we create the basics foundation of content. We, we create and identify all the products and the assets. We create the offer and then we execute. Most people start here, whereas we start with brand. So notice how our, our offer is like box number nine. Most people start with their product and focus just on their main product. And if you're a service-based business, they'll start just with the service that they deliver. Some people do the avatar, but just a little bit, which might be a little bit of the demographics, or if they're running Facebook ads, they know that they'll just have to find some parameters in there, copy off, you know, create a lookalike audience and do an age or a location and those kind of things. And then they go to offer. This is what most people do. And you can probably relate if you've done this yourself. And maybe you've done one of the others, which is great. So if you were to ask me, well, Aveline, where do we start? In the past, I would have said here the avatar because to me the avatar has always been critical like the central core of it and I would have said get this nailed but over the last sort of two years I've evolved I've evolved my business and like I've shown you I now do this my avatar is fourth so I actually get my clients to do the Ikigai and we've actually amended or sort of evolved this somewhat to our process. So it's not exactly like the Ikigai. And if you haven't seen this before, I recommend you go and research it. So what is it? So the Ikigai is a Japanese concept that combines the terms Iki, meaning alive or life, and Gai, which means benefit or worth. So when you combine those, of course, you've got the alive or life worth so the things that give your life worth meaning or purpose and for us this is what I share with my clients and say well this is where you want to be operating from you want to start in the middle here this is your north star and it's the lens through which you need to decide on what to do and how to do it because so many things can come up in our day and come across our desks so many opportunities or a new a new thing a new a new shiny object oh look at that you know I'd love to try that or you, you know a colleague is doing something else and you go oh wow that look that looks good someone makes you another offer I'd like to partner with you on this or you know there's so many different things come up and I always come back to this because this is the north star this is the thing that keeps me or and a person in alignment what's so important about this well when you're in alignment you feel free as in there's no resistance internally and that's important we all know what it feels like to have a situation or an offer a client where there's resistance inside our bodies and our, in our minds and we've got angst or anxiety or frustration and when we're in alignment, we, we just feel amazing. And then what happens then after that is we naturally connect with the right people. When we are in alignment, we actually start resonating, vibrating at a certain frequency. Because remember, we're, we're all energy. And I bet you didn't think we were going to go down this path in this conversation. <laughs> but we are. We're spiritual beings in, in physical bodies and we're all, everything's energy. So when we're in alignment with who we really are, 
and we've got that nailed, the right people show up. You think about someone, the phone rings and it's that person, you go, man, the synchronicities. And then something else happens and something else happens and then the, the right partner shows up, the right client turns up. That's what happens. When we're not in alignment, that's when things are hard and there's resistance internally. So this is what I get my clients to do first. Then we focus on the avatar. And what is different about our avatar is it's not just about demographics or psychographics. There's another element to the avatar for us. And I've just called it the values and purpose graphics only because we're using the word graphics here. So I've just called it values and purpose graphics. We need to be aligned with our customers' graphics on a human level. This is about human to human. This is this is connection. It's um, I, I want to you know go back to the the line previously where I said that most people focus on products, they focus on products first, and they'll go to the market and say, "Oh my God, you know I've got like," and I'm just going to be really basic with this example. I've got two lipsticks here, you know, like I'll say, oh, this one's amazing. Look, this is my lipstick and it's long lasting. And yeah, this is the color and um, this is the price. And if you buy it in the next, you know, today, you'll get so much off, 10% uh, off. And then I could say, well, as an alternative, here's another lipstick. It's the same color, same size. It's the same price. But actually, we, we um, care about the rainforests in the Amazon and replanting of the rainforests that are cut down. So 10% from the sale of every lipstick goes back to replanting rainforests. So that gives you an idea of who I am and what's important to me versus the other person just selling a lipstick. And people align on purpose and values. That's how we get the alignment. And that's really important to really define in an avatar. Here's an example. I just want to show you, this is ours. This is um, just a few screenshots of the avatar we have for Six Star Business. And his name is Mike. And yes, you can see some demographics here and, you know, a bit of, bit of language here, but it's about 10 pages of a document. And this is Mike. He's a real person. He's lovely. And we talk about Mike, you know, he's become a person in the business. And it's really important that you actually love your customers so much or your avatar that they become a real person to you. So my next strategic tip, the number two that we do is our message to market. And our message to market is a combination of a few things. And this is what we what we do, we take the core signature product or star product. We combine that with purpose. So what, what our purpose is and our avatar, so who we're talking to. And then that, come, that, that equals our message to market. How many times have you been in a, uh, you know, a, a marketing or a networking group or on a, online on a new call and you've got a, Someone said, oh, okay, um, please tell us what you do. And you've got like 30 seconds or a minute to share to a group of new people what you do. How many people have you seen start answering and they just talk about their product? Oh, I provide psychology services to, you know, adults and people who are in business and we really focus on this. And they go into sort of the features or the benefits and we do that to help them to get more time back and, and that's the way a lot of people talk. And sometimes they keep talking because they realize sort of on a, on a on subconscious level that they haven't really explained what they do or they don't feel comfortable. So they just keep talking. So they have the talkers that over talk and then the people that just talk about the product. And there's plenty of people out there that talk about the USP and the elevator pitch. And so this is not an elevator pitch unless you want to actually say it in the elevator, but the whole point of the message to market 
is that you've got a, a statement that actually defines who you are and your purpose. So I'm going to share with you mine. So I help purpose-driven business owners serve more ideal clients and stop wasting money on marketing that doesn't work. I do this through a customized six-star journey program that is bringing meaning back into people's businesses. That's my message to market when people say, what do you do? I can use this on website, LinkedIn. I can use it in lots of places. And it's the cornerstone piece of content that I have to, to explain to people what I do. Now, the key thing about this message to market is it's a brilliant filtering system. Okay, it filters out the people that don't align, the people that just don't get what I've said. How many times have you said to someone in, in one of those environments where you've said what you do and then they just go, huh? Or if you've done it well, they'll say, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more about that. The goal with this is to actually only attract the people that you want to attract. Remember what I said before about the values and purpose alignment? That's what this does. And, and I find that the people that don't get it, they don't say anything. They move along. And that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. And the people that do resonate with it, then ask me to tell them more. And they want to engage with me. And because they resonate on some level. That's what I want. I only want the people that align with my values and my purpose and who are my ideal client. And so your goal would be to come up with your message to market that does the same thing. So it's not just about your product. Um, <laughs> I've been nicknamed the anti-marketer. I'm not sure if I like that, but anyway, I, I put it up there anyway. So. What makes me different or what makes this a different perspective? Well, to me, modern marketing or today's marketing is very soulless. It's one dimensional. It's competitive, ego driven and transactional. And let's face it, marketing does not have a very good rap, does it? The industry has a pretty, pretty awful reputation and, and marketers in general are not trusted. For me, authentic marketing is purposeful, soulful, and an expression of our true genius, and it's value-driven. So I believe our relationship to our passion and our purpose is also related to how authentically we can show up and be in the world. So the more that we're aligned with who we are, our purpose and our passion, the more authentic we can be, and then we will align with the right people and they'll come at the right time in the right way. They'll listen. They'll align with your messages. Oh. All right, the solution. So I believe these are the solutions to the biggest issues I've just given you. Now, first of all, get crystal clear on your value. Get crystal clear on who you truly are. That means your gifts and your genius. And again, it's not the product you sell. Get crystal clear on whom you are serving and what their deepest needs are. <laughs> Get out of your own way so you can shine through. Get crystal clear on your inner meaning and purpose. And then communicate all the above in your unique voice. This to me is the most important part. Okay. If you get crystal clear on your inner meaning and purpose, or what brings you meaning and therefore joy, what your purpose is, and then bring that out in your unique voice. That's the gold. That's when magic happens. Now, I've talked about purpose here a number of times, and purpose gets banded a lot around. And I want to give you a distinction a definition or a distinction. So when I work on purpose with my clients, there's a business purpose. There's a reason that your business is in existence and you are attached to that 
you're an ex your business is an expression of you when you're a solopreneur especially. So we look at what is the meaning, what does your business do, what's the purpose of the business. And that's often different or slightly different to your own personal purpose. And it's something that's bigger than you because it impacts your customers and the community and the people around you. And tapping into that is really critical for that alignment and that connection. Purpose alone is not going to get there, but I want to talk about, I want to actually show you an example. So I have a customer who came to me and he was a, naturally a purposeful person, right? He wanted to do good in the world. He wanted to make an impact. He wanted to make more of an impact than he was making. And he was an accounting firm, effectively. And his website was pretty rough. When I want to say rough. It was pretty awful. From It, it, it reminded me of, of someone's like cousin or nephew pulling the site together. Uh, looked like a very friendly accounting firm, but it was just, it lacked direction. There was no specific purpose. There was no positioning. There was no message to market, nothing. He wanted to be seen on a national level and he was in a regional town. And so we worked on everything and we went through the framework, okay, the nine boxes. And then he defined his purpose. And what developed from that was a, re a definition of his business. And that had obviously changed his website. It changed the way he spoke. It changed who he spoke to and how he showed up in the world. And all of a sudden, things changed. You know, he attracted different staff that were energized, they were focused and aligned, they believed in it. He attracted national industry groups that were talking to him he started you know case studies and data benchmarking with um, particular industry sectors and seen as a national purpose person and i want to share with you now what what it looked like i want to share something with you so in a nutshell yes he had identity retention and engagement issues uh, once he discovered the purpose that's it. They believed in their value in the journey. He updated the website. Everything changed. And he also had higher retention. I think I said that community engagement, national presence, and much more. So I'm going to flick over now and I'm going to play this video. Now, just let me know if you can't, if you can't hear it. I'm pretty sure I'm sharing sound. So only goes for a couple of minutes. Not yet. Sorry. It's not showing not yet. Yet. Oh, it's not showing? No. Hmm. Okay, just one moment. I'm going to. Could you hear it though? No. Now we can see it. Not hear it yet. Share sound. Okay. We all remember a time when life was... Can you hear that? Yes, we can. Simpler, less complex. We had time for one another. If we saw someone in need, we helped them without hesitating. But over time, this has changed. Everywhere around us, we see people are isolated and lacking connection with each other. Broken relationships are everywhere and we've forgotten our connection with our community. Has our addiction to the expansion and growth at all costs come at the expense of the most vulnerable? Demand for services in our communities is on the rise, yet the experience and quality isn't always consistent. Our vulnerable are often left feeling like a number instead of a valued human being. Somehow, we've forgotten our past and the importance of connections, both with people and Mother Earth. 
We believe that organizations serving our community can make the biggest impact. We also believe Mother Earth has all the answers we need. What if all organizations operated consistently and efficiently just like Mother Earth does? What if organizations could easily improve the lives of the vulnerable whilst also being financially sustainable? What if the vulnerable in our communities were so supported and connected they never felt isolated or alone? We believe we all deserve to live in a world where everyone is connected. Serving our vulnerable isn't about financial gain. It's about our humanity. Let's shift the world to reconnect ourselves to each other and the earth once more. So hopefully you can see just by that, I mean, it's a video, but it was a video created based on purpose. And it's a really, really strong example of how one can change everything and be perceived very differently. I, I love watching that video. It moves me every time. So what kind of future do you want? Um, what's the cost of doing nothing? Well, if you keep doing the same marketing activities that you've been doing, then you'll get the same results. It's quite simple. Um, remember, you are the most important ingredient in your business. You are, because you drive the business. And investing in yourself now and how you show up in your business will pay dividends down the track. I believe the world can only change when we can demonstrate and be our unique selves with our true value and genius. I hate to say it, but without healing our stuff, we, I'll say you, but we will continue to spin around on the same spot. And I see this over and over again with the people in, around me, business owners, pe businesses that come in to work with me. And to me, this is the most important thing. Because ultimately, I want to be in a world that continues to improve. And just like my client, who is helping businesses in the community, you know, he's helping to create a better world. And that's what I'm doing. And that's hopefully what you're, you want to do as well with the business that you have. And I believe we can only do that properly and fully when we can demonstrate and be our unique selves and figure out our value and our genius and how we bring that to the world. So uh, I'd like to, that, that wraps up uh, the content. And I would like to offer, for those that are interested, not no selling, it's a 30 minute discovery call. And what I do is I take people through my framework, the one you saw with the nine boxes, and I offer to you know give them at least two things that they can do straight away. Um, absolutely no obligation. I'm not looking to sell anything because, you know, there's only one of me and I can only take so many clients, but I do want to help people and help them get on the right track. So I'm going to pop that in the chat box in a moment. Um, and you can see I'm extremely organized. Yes, I am. I promise. Um, here we go. And I've also dropped another link in the chat, which is to a scorecard we have, if you're interested. And it's one that looks at your marketing and positioning, and it gives you a score. So it basically goes through three key areas of purpose, mindset, and customer journey. It takes about two minutes, and it will give you a score and show you what areas need work, and then what you can do. It gives you some suggestions and things to fix. So those links are in the chat. And now I want to open it up and ask for questions. Does anyone have a question? Have I stunned you all? Or is there something that uh, I said or that, you know, that you're, being, you're challenged about? Or, or was there a key highlight? 
can, can I ask something about your um, the is it 16 box process? <laughs> I meant nine boxes, uh, but yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I've all got 16. <laughs> yeah, I, I should, I need, I, maybe I need to expand it. There we go. It's because I do something with 16 boxes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was just, I was just thinking about the, um, where you have the avatar. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and obviously it makes sense in that order. But I, I think like for me, it's quite, I mean, I, I kind of, it's hard to think how to, how to prioritize that because i know you've got your brand what's the second brand then what was the next one you've got purpose brand purpose and then is it avatar avatar's fourth fourth what was the third one um unique Sorry, style I'm... thank you there we go thank you <laughs> unique so yes yeah, so i get i guess how do you define those three before deciding on who you want to be working with because I, I, from all the years I've been doing this, I, I used to start with Avatar and hmm. link it back to the product. And I realized there was a gap. There was something missing. And what was missing is the individual. Because hmm. if you haven't figured out and done the work on, first of all, gone out of your own way, figured out who you are, peeled the layers back, understood what your unique style is and then what your genius is, then a lot of the things that you'll go through on the journey in your business will be harder and or not work. And mm -hmm. how you show up to your avatar is it, it, it's a lot easier to show up once you've figured out who you are because you need to figure out you first and then you can go out to your customer. Now, I, I understand you, in your your work, you, you're totally focused on customers, and which is great. And so they are the central focus. And when a business validates who their customer is, it's wonderful, but it shouldn't be the first thing. It's like saying when you're on an aeroplane, who do you give the oxygen mask to first? Is it you or the child? Mm. You know, you've you've got to figure out you first. And, and think about what I said about alignment. When you're in pure alignment, then you can you can you know how to speak to your avatar. That's and and this has come about through, yeah, a lot of a lot of years of doing this, and especially the last probably 12, 18 months. Uh, that's when, I, like I said, I used to focus on avatar first, and then I realised actually that's got to come kind of after this after the self, after the individual. Yeah, because I guess you can't be um you can't be authentic trying to create oh. something for someone else unless mm. you know who you are first. Correct. Clever. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> that's, that's okay. I know it's probably a head spin. I get that I'm what I'm suggesting here is is very counterintuitive to what the norm is and, and what people are used to doing. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, great question. Has anyone else got a comment or a question? I'll take that as a compliment then, or <laughs> or that I've just stunned you, and then and you 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 know you're going to go away and think about it. Um, okay, well that's good. <laughs> Um, it's like a hand and rain. Oh <laughs> gosh, yeah. So, if anybody wants the slides, I'll invite you to put your name in the chat, okay? And I will send them to you. Just let me know. Um, please get in, in contact. That's the email address. I'm on LinkedIn at that address. And yeah, thank you so much for coming. And I want to thank you for your questions. Um, Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Nikki. Um, Thank you. Can I have some gel to fix my blown back hair? Sorry, I'm not on Michael Vid. Not pretty this morning. No worries, Matt. It's um, it's totally cool. Thank you. All right. Have a wonderful day and uh, a lo <laughs> lovely evening for those who are here. It's been a pleasure.
hope you've enjoyed the session and gotten a lot out of it. That's my goal. My goal is always to educate and provide something new for people to get the Brilliant. most out of, out of their businesses. So, yeah, thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you.